The Buffalo Bills finished the 2023 regular season with an 11-6 record and made the playoffs for the fifth consecutive year. And for the fifth consecutive year, they lost in the playoffs before making it to the big game. They lost to the eventual Super Bowl champion Chiefs in the divisional round with a score of 27-24. And for the third time in four years, Patrick Mahomes and company sent Josh Allen and the Bills home. No 53-man roster is ever the same as it was the previous year, and the Buffalo Bills certainly found that out this offseason. They most recently traded star receiver Stefan Diggs to the Houston Texans. Texans for a 2025 second round pick while also sending a fifth and sixth round pick. But Diggs wasn't the only player Buffalo moved on from this offseason. In fact, there are a lot of veterans that moved on from Buffalo this offseason, and in today's video, we're going to break down the depressing reality for the Buffalo Bills. This is not just a reality for them, but for a lot of other teams in the near future too, and we will compare Buffalo's situation with several other contending teams. Now let's begin. Jordan Poyer, Tredavious White, Mitch Morse, Gabe Davis, and Leonard Floyd, amongst many others, are players that left the Buffalo Bills this offseason in free agency. Some of these guys were free agents, while others were flat-out released. And when you take a look at the Bills' future and what's in store for them, you have to go back in time and see how they got to where they are today, which is a team entering a transition period while still having one of the best quarterbacks in football in Josh Allen. We'll start with Stefan Diggs, who of course was acquired from the Minnesota Vikings back in 2020. This trade made perfect sense for the Bills, who were coming off of a year in 2019 in which they finished 10-6 and, and lost in the wildcard round to the Deshaun Watson-led Texans by a score of 22-19. They finished 23rd in points per game, and Josh Allen's top three receivers on the team were John Brown, Cole Beasley, and Isaiah McKenzie. They traded for Diggs, and Josh Allen went from an athletic project quarterback to one of the best in the league and a guy who would go on to have a 46 total touchdown season in 2020. They had a lot of talent, and they had a quarterback on the rookie contract, and the receiver they traded a first-round pick in change four would actually lead the league in both receptions and receiving yards during his first season with the team. In a lot of ways, they were doing what the Texans are now, helping out their young quarterback as much as they can while he was still on the rookie contract, and it paid off as Buffalo went 13-3 and, and finished second in points per game. They averaged over 31 per game that year and had over 500 points as a team. Eventually, they lost to the Chiefs in the postseason. Oh well, it happens. But 2020 was a hell of a learning experience for the Bills, and they entered 2021 as a lot of people's Super Bowl pick expecting them to take the next step. This year was, of course, the year they lost the infamous 13 seconds game and were sent home again by the Kansas City Chiefs, this time with a score of 42 to 36. They entered 2022 on a mission and they started out 6 and 1 and had four double digit wins in the process. They embarrassed the Rams in week 1, they embarrassed the Titans in week 2, and they beat the Steelers by 35 points in week 5. This team at times looked unbeatable. But things changed as the season went on, and on Thanksgiving Day, star pass rusher Von Miller tore his ACL and ended his season prematurely. Buffalo ended up finishing the season 13-3, but did not look close to the team they looked like in the early parts of the year, and they narrowly escaped a Skylar Thompson-led Dolphins team in the wildcard round with a score of 34-31, before losing at home to the Bengals with a score of 27-10. Now, with a combination of a six-foot snowstorm that forced their Cleveland game to be played in Detroit, Von Miller and several other players going down with season-ending injuries, and of course the DeMar Hamlin incident, I kind of give Buffalo a pass in 2022 because of how abnormal things were relative to a normal football season. But 2023 was a new beginning, and ultimately we know how it ended. Another home loss in the divisional round of the playoffs. Every NFL roster has to pay players, and it's a part of the business. You're not going to have star players on rookie contracts forever. 
period. The Texans know this with CJ Stroud, and we're seeing them in real time go all in to try and win a Super Bowl. And when you look at the Bills roster over the past few years, they went all in with guys like Stefan Diggs, Jordan Poyer, Micah Hyde, Tredavious White, Matt Milano, and of course, Von Miller. But what has benefited the Bills over the past few years, despite paying Josh Allen, is Josh's cap hits in 2022 and 2023 were 16 million and 18 million, so while he signed the big contract, it didn't really matter, at least not yet, because he wasn't making 50 or 60 million per year, and this is of course per SpotTrack.com. But Josh signed a six-year, $258 million contract, and his cap hit in 2024 jumps up to $30.3 million, and in 2025 jumps up to $60.7 million, before going back down to $56.4 million in 2026. So with all of the Bills players aging that were also getting paid, Buffalo effectively hit a roster reset and that's where we are today. That is also the reality of going in during a time period where a quarterback is not making a lot of money relative to where the rest of the league is getting paid. The Bills also aren't the only ones to have to go through this and the Chargers right now are another example. They tried to go in with Keenan Allen, Joey Bosa, Khalil Mack, Mike Williams, and worst of all, the free agent acquisition in JC Jackson. I know every January for the past few years, Bills haters have been waiting for Buffalo to lose in the postseason, but they've been a hell of a lot more successful than other teams that have tried the same method. LA, for example, went to the playoffs once while Justin Herbert was on his rookie contract, and all they did was blow a 27 point lead in the playoffs. Jacksonville, for example, has really yet to give Trevor Lawrence a wide receiver one, and they have one playoff win to show for it, and their outlook isn't great because they still have a lot of holes on their roster. And it of course is to be determined whether or not Trevor Lawrence is the guy. But with how the NFL works in today's era, this is what you're going to see from teams moving forward in terms of how they maneuver around the quarterback's contract. They will effectively go all in for a year, or maybe two or three if you're lucky, and have to reset the roster, which is what Buffalo did this offseason. Now, I know you may be thinking, well, how can Kansas City do this and stay good for all these years and have a dynasty while everyone else plays catch up? The answer is a little more complicated and we'll break down their situation too. The part that stinks for Buffalo especially is while they could be having key players contribute on rookie contracts at the moment and have key players getting paid pennies at their position relative to what they are actually worth production wise, you know, kind of like Justin Jefferson, CeeDee Lamb, and Jamar Chase have been for a few years, well, a perfect example of this is the first round of the 2022 NFL Draft. Kansas City had a tough decision to make as star receiver Tyree Kill wanted top dollar and Kansas City was not going to give it to him. So he was traded to the Dolphins and KC received a first and second round pick in the 2022 draft along with a few day three selections. Kansas City eventually walked out of the first round with corner Trent McDuffie, who would go on to be named a first-team All-Pro in 2023, and pass rusher George Karloftis, who finished the 2023 season with double-digit sacks and would finish the year with over 60 pressures, which was second in his draft class, only behind Detroit's Aiden Hutchinson. They received not just okay contribution, but great contribution from their first round picks, while Buffalo drafted corner Kyer Elam, who was a healthy scratch multiple times during the 2023 regular season. We live in an era where people want to make wins and losses almost a quarterback exclusive thing, but that example right there sums up the dynasty the Chiefs have had versus the heartbreaking losses Buffalo has had over the past few years. But what also particularly hurt the Bills was the Von Miller signing. Von technically signed a six-year, $120 million contract during the 2022 offseason, and if you do not know how NFL contracts work, what you need to know is the guarantees are what matters. 51 of the 120 was guaranteed, and this was always going to be a three- or four-year deal at maximum. For reference, Von is scheduled to have a cap hit of $32.6 million in 2027 at the 
the age of 38 and that's simply not going to happen. But what hurt the most about this deal was the fact Von Tours ACL in year one of the contract. He was already 33 years old when the contract was signed, and the Bills rightfully thought Vaughn was the missing piece to put this team over the edge and to get them to a Super Bowl. Having a defensive line of Vaughn, Greg Rousseau, who was expected to take a step as a pass rusher entering year two at the time, and Ed Oliver was pretty solid. But Vaughn hurt his knee and was not the same player when he came back at 34 years old. At this point, Vaughn is pretty untradeable because nobody would want a now 35-year-old pass rusher for this big of a contract and headache, especially when you factor in he has a dead cap hit of $23.2 million in 2024 and still has $15 million guaranteed owed to him in 2025. Teams often have tough decisions in terms of which veterans to keep, and the Bills chose to keep Vaughn and chose to trade Stefan Diggs this offseason. Now, Diggs was a little different because he essentially forced his way out of Buffalo, and Buffalo is actually eating a $31 million cap hit from Stefan this season, which is another thing in itself, but we also saw the Chargers choose between Mike Williams, Keenan Allen, Joey Bosa, and Khalil Mack. Once you pay your top five or six guys in today's era and have them on huge contracts, there's going to be a point where you have to choose between the players because the team is not going to pay three 32-year-old players $30 million per year. This is another reason why the Chiefs have been so successful over the past few years is because they moved Tyreek and drafted two great players. But the other reason is they kind of have a cheat code in Travis Kelsey, and I don't mean cheat code in the sense of him being a Hall of Fame tight end, or him swiftly moving through defenses and racking up numbers year after year after year. I mean cheat code in the sense of what he is getting paid relative to his production. Travis's cap hit in 2023 was $14.7 million, and he put up 984 yards and 5 touchdowns. It was a down year for him, but he had a streak of 7 straight 1,000 yard years before that. I am referring to this as a cheat code because tight ends are paid less than receivers. Gabe Davis signed a 3 year $39 million contract, with the potential of it to get up to $50 million with the Jags this offseason, and if you had the choice, would you rather pay Travis Kelsey $13 million, or $14.7 million per year, which is what he made in 2023, or Gabe Davis $13 million per year? So when you factor in Kansas City has receiver production on a discount, and their quarterback's contract can be maneuvered around round, there's a reason Kansas City has been so good and it's not just due to Patrick Mahomes and Andy Reid. Everyone plays a part in this and the reason we bring the Chiefs up of course is because this is who has sent Buffalo home in three of the past four years. Buffalo has their quarterback situation figured out, obviously. But what the Bills are going through right now is also what the Chargers are doing with Justin Herbert, and I know it may not seem like it, but the Chiefs will go through this with Patrick Mahomes too. There will be a point when Travis Kelsey retires and they don't have great production on a discount and can't do the things they've done over the past few years. McDuffie and Karloftis will have to get paid at some point, and we even saw the Chiefs trade Legereus need recently. So, just because it looks like the Bills are going through it this offseason, doesn't mean any other team isn't or will in the near future. The Bills roster reset is just more pronounced because of all the moves they've made in the past few months. Buffalo will of course still compete due to having Josh Allen, but 2024 will be the down year for them, and I say down year with quotations around that. They could make the playoffs this year, but if they do, I would still be very surprised if they get past the divisional round. The bill is eventually due, and we've seen that with the Bills over the past few months. Teams have to reset their roster while still having their star quarterback. Buffalo is entering a tough time, and they will face a lot of adversity in 2024, but this year is supposed to be a build-up for the next run in the Josh Allen era. If Buffalo is lucky, they'll have him for another 10 years or so and will be able to go all in at least two more times. They didn't win a Super Bowl in the first part of Josh Allen's career, but who's to say they can't win one in the next few years in the middle of Josh Allen's career? Please like and subscribe if you enjoyed and check out the Football Analysis Podcast. The link is in the bio and I'll see you next time. Love you guys.